गोविंदमादिपुरशं भजामि गोविंदमादिपुरशंतमी चिंतामणि प्रकर सो कल्प लक्ष्मण गोविंदमादिपुरशं तमा भजामि चिंतामणि प्रकर सुकृतेषु सुरभीरविपाल लक्ष्मी सहसता संभ्रम से मौन गोविंदमादिपुर the first person and generally in grammatical knowledge first person means i as here first person means the supreme lord adi purusha <coughs> the original person not the first person original person <coughs> the original person is the original in the original planet there is uh, the original planet oh just like here the original planet science scientists accept the sun uh similarly the sun is also one of the millions of many other suns there are millions of suns the sun in the estimation of this universe is the original planet but there are innumerable universes and in each and every universe there is a sun so therefore there are innumerable suns and moons that is accepted by the modern science and it is uh stated in the vedic literature also so sun is not the original planet but the original planet is called goloka bindav but the sun has similarity just like the sun is shining the shining planet and on the sun sign there are other planets they are moving by the heat of the sun sign on in their orbit the similarly sun is also moving according to modern science sun sun is fixed star but according to vedic literature sun is also moving <coughs> in the brahma sangita we understand the movements of the sun uh, चक्षुरेश सविता सकल ग्रहाना राजा समस्त सूर्यमूर्ति रसेश तेजा जस्ाग्रया भ्रमति संत काल चक्रो गोविंदम महादेपुरुषम तमह भज
the meaning of this verse is that I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda as Jasa Agvaya by whose order this sun which is considered to be the king of all planets. Sun is the king of all planets. There is a known fact. Uh, without sun, all these planets, they cannot live. Without sun sign, their life will be extinct. Uh, therefore, sun is described in the Brahma Sanghita uh, Raja Samastha Grahana of all the planets <clears throat> and Asesa Teja Asesa Teja means unlimited heat fire unlimited fire nobody knows what is the source of this fire but there is unlimited fire some 93 million some minds away from this planet, still the heat is sometimes uh, unbearable. Just see what is the fire. And it is so many times, 1400,000 times bigger than this planet, uh, earthly planet. So Brahma Sangita says, in spite of the sun, so many. I mean, it's a high qualification. It is moving under the order of Govinda. Jasa Gnaya Brahmati Sang Vritakala Chakra. It has got its own orbit. It is moving. Kala Chakra. Kala Chakra means limited. Uh, nobody is unlimited. That's like we are also moving. Within the time limit, Kala Chakra. Yeah. The planet, this planet is moving, other planet is moving. Oh. Similarly, the sun planet is moving. Smad Bhagavatam, I think, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the speed of the sun is 16,000 miles per second. But it is moving. Uh, 16,000 miles per second, it is moving. So, Brahma Sangita gives us this information. Jachakshuresa uh, Sabita. Sabita means the sun planet. Jachakshuresa. This Sabita, this sun, is considered to be the eyes, one of the eyes of the Lord. In his universal form, the sun is considered to be one of the eyes of the Lord. And the moon is also another eye. Take it figuratively or universal form of the Lord, but you cannot escape the seeing power of Govind. He is seeing always. There are so many witnesses, according to Vedic literature. So we cannot do anything hiding from the eyes of the Lord. Wow. He is seeing, he is witness. And that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Upodrashtya Anumantya. Upodrashtya. Upodrashtya means Ah, Ovarsia. Ovarsia. Now, in our childhood, not childhood, we are at that time a uh, college student, a Scottish Church College in Calcutta. So, that is Christian college, Scottish Church. So, we had to read Bible also. There was a Bible class. From one to one thirty, so I remember uh, our professor. He was a great philosopher, also Doctor W. S. Arpuar. He was very 
nice man, very friendly. So he was explaining <coughs> from Bible. I, I do not know that the Christian, they do not believe in karma. Is it a fact? <coughs> they do not believe in karma. Reap what you sow. Huh? They have a verse that you reap what you sow, which means whatever you do, you receive the reaction. So the so car car karma is accepted. But I, I do not know. Uh, uh, Dr. Argo Arquart was arguing that uh, if I am suffering or enjoying, as the effect of my uh, previous life. Uh, so who is the witness? His argument was like this. Just like if I have committed some criminal act in the court, uh, there is need of witness. Uh, then mm, one has to prove that somebody has seen that he has done this. This is simply legal uh, formality. Who is going to steal by keeping one witness? Nobody is going, but court wants that. Who has seen that he has told? Anyway, so Dr. Arquart's argument was, so who is the witness? Oh. I am suffering the reaction of my previous uh, bad or evil activities, but who is the witness? But at that time, we are not so intelligent, we could not answer. But later on, when we are grown up and studied Bhagavad Gita, then here in the Bhagavad Gita, we saw that Upadrashtya, the Lord is Upadrashtya, is witness. Upadrashtya, Anumanta. Anumanta means ordinary. You cannot do anything without being sanctioned by the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, you have no power. Therefore, you are in all respect to independent. Oh, that we have, have got very nice experience. This hand is moving, but if the Power is drawn, withdrawn. I cannot move my hand. Therefore, I am not independent to move my hand. So, Upadrashta Anumanta. We cannot do anything without being sanctioned by the Supreme Lord. There is a, an English word that are not even a grass moves without the sanction of the Lord. Well, that is a fact. So how one is doing nice things and how one is doing evil things if he is the order giver. That is our independence. We can take sanction from the Lord. If we want to do something evil, I cannot do it without the sanction of the Supreme. Or even if I do something, Ah, very nice. That also I cannot do without this hands. Uh, the how the Lord gives uh, such sanction. The sanction is like this, just like a child is crying to get something from the parent and the parent being disgusted gives him something early. Take it. Such kind of sanction. When we do something evil, the sanction is from the law, but it is not willing sanction against the will of the law. And when you do something uh, in cooperation with the law, that is called bhakti. Oh. We are doing everything in the material world, we are doing everything, for, uh, all nonsense for sense gratification. There is also sanction of the law, but that is unwilling sanction. But when 
we execute devotional service, a loving devotional service. Uh, that is very pleasing to the Lord. So the Bhakti Yoga means uh, acting uh, by pleasing the Lord. That's all. That is the body of Srimad Bhagavad. You are not forbidden to do this thing or that thing. But you have to see only whether by your action the Supreme Lord is satisfied. That's all. <coughs> that much knowledge you must have. Then your life will be successful. Oh. The Srimad Bhagavad says, Atapungvi Dijasreshta Varnasama Vibhagasa Shanushthitasya Karmasya Sangsiddhi Haritosa Atapungvi Dijasreshta This uh, verse was spoken by Suta Goswami who was speaking before a very learned gathering at Naimisharan. It is the system, a Vedic system, that, oh, not Vedic system, everywhere, all over the world, any civilized society, there is a oh, nice speaker, learned speaker, and many oh, persons here in that is the system from very old time. So, Sudha Goswami, he was a representative of Sukadev Goswami, the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, and he was addressing very learned Brahmins. So, he is addressing Dija Sreshta. Sreshta means the, I'm going to say, Pikta, the topmost of the Brahmins. They were topmost of the Brahmins still. They require knowledge. Knowledge is so nice that even if you think that uh, you are very learned, you are well versed in everything, still you require knowledge. That should be our motto. Uh, don't think that I have finished. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught this lesson in his life, uh, that he represented himself as a fool. So everyone should uh, think of himself that I am still a fool. Just like it is said that Sir Isaac Newton, he was such a learned man, but he used to say that I had simply collected a few grains of sand uh, from the beach of knowledge. Knowledge is so vast that his knowledge was simply a few grains of the vast amount of sand of knowledge. <clears throat> so everyone should think like that. Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita Kat, the author, he says that I am lowest than the germs in this tool. I have no knowledge. So the more you become advanced in knowledge, you know that how insignificant you are in comparison to the Supreme. So, <clears throat> although they are learned Brahmins, or Dija, Dija means not only Brahmins, but the uh, Kshatriyas or the Vaishyas. Kshatriya means a ruling class, administrative class, politicians, they are called Kshatriyas. Uh, and Brahmins means learned scholar in philosophy, in science, uh, in theology. They are Brahmins and Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. Vaishyas means traders, uh, mercantile people, and Sudras means worker, laborer. So the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas, they are called Dija. Dija means twice born. The Sudras, those who are once born simply by the father and mother, they are called Sudras. Uh, they are not counted amongst the higher class. 
but those who are twice born. That means one born, once born by the father and mother, and the second birth is the spiritual father and Vedic knowledge. One, once born by the, this material bodily father and mother, and the second birth is uh, Vedic knowledge, the mother, and the spiritual master, the father. So that is second bar. So second bar, those who accept the second bar, they are called Dija, twice born. So he is addressing Dija. Ata Pungvi Dija Sreshta, the topmost of the twice born. Uh, topmost of the twice born means Brahmin also, are uh, these three classes. Take it for granted that uh, the Brahmins. But the next line is, Ata Pungvi Dija Sreshta, Barnasrama Vibhagasa. There are four kinds of classification. Uh, the Brahmin, the uh, Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, and the Shudras. And this is called Varna and Asrama. Asrama means spiritual situation. The Brahmachari, the Grihastha, the Vanaprastha, and the Sannyas. They are spiritually situated. So anyone, either a Brahmachari or a Brahmin or a man, Kshatriya or an, anyone, uh, he will fall down in either of these eight divisions of human social order. So, <clears throat> Sudha Goswami says, that anyone, that means anyone, uh, must have some occupation. But not some of you are. If you are engineer, then you have got some occupation. If you are medical man, you have got some occupation. Uh, if you are a philosopher, uh, yeah, you have got some occupation. If you are laborer, worker, you have got some occupation. Uh, even if you are a thief, you have got some occupation. So everyone has got occupation. So they just see how nice it is. So Bhagavad says, it doesn't matter what is your occupation, but simply try to see whether by your uh, activities of a particular type of occupation, you have satisfied the Supreme Law. That's it. Then, uh, Atapung vidija sreshta, barnasama vibhagasa, sanu sthitasa dharmasa, sangsiddhi haritosana. Haritosana. That hmm, your perfection of life will be uh, uh, considered in uh, uh, relation with the satisfaction of the Supreme Law. That you have to learn. How you are satisfying the Supreme Law. Now, at the present moment, immediately, uh, we, do, well, of course, taking a, a Arjun and Krishna, Arjun, Krishna was present uh, <clears throat> before Arjun. So he, he was receiving direct order, uh, uh, he was speaking directly. But if somebody says that uh, how I can know that I am satisfying the Supreme Lord because the Lord is not directly present before me, uh, uh, this argument is not very strong. The Lord is present uh, by His Word. Just like in your Bible, there are ten commandments. So if you follow uh, just like the state is present by the uh, law books, if you follow the law, then you are uh, satisfying the state. Uh, just like keep to the right. If you are following the rules, you are keeping the, uh, your car on the right side, you are stopping when there is red light. That means uh, if you are satisfying the regulation, then you are satisfying the state. Similarly, if you satisfy uh, the regulative principles, then you are satisfying the law. It is very nice. It is a very simple thing. But you must try to satisfy. 
whether by your work, by your activity, you are satisfied. Then your life is perfect. Atapung vidija sreshta bannasama vibhagasa shanus It doesn't matter whatever you are doing. But you have to see whether by your action uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is uh, satisfied. Now, uh, to facilitate these uh, activities of the human being, uh, there is spiritual mount. Spiritual master is the representative uh, of God. Therefore, Vedic literature says, uh, in order to understand whether God is being satisfied or not, the Tadvigyanatham sa Guru Meva Abhigachi. One must approach a spiritual master in order to know, uh, because my life is meant for satisfying God. But uh, understanding that God is not present in my uh, front, I cannot see him face to face. How can I know that he is satisfied or not? Uh, but there are books, scriptures, literatures. Apart from that, the Vedic injunction is that Tadvigana, in order to understand whether your action or activities has pleased the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, you have to take information from the Guru or the spiritual master. Tatvigyana thamsa Guru meva avigachet. Avigachet means must. And the Vishra uh, Chakravati's prayer for the spiritual master, this is also said, Yasa Prasada and Bhagavat Prasad. Uh, the last uh, version of his prayer is, Yes, whose prasadat uh, satisfaction, Bhagavat Prasad, the Supreme Lord is satisfied. That is the If by your action, because when you accept a spiritual master, uh, then you have to work under his guidance. Uh, there are so many, and um, I mean to say, rules and regulations, but Adho Gudbhasana, the first thing is to accept a spiritual master. And if, if you have got a bona fide spiritual master, then it is to be understood that you have, you have approached God because he is present. And if you act according to his direction, then it is to be understood that you are satisfying the law. This is the way, Vedic way. Jasya uh, prasadad bhagavat prasad. Jasa prasadad nagati kutopi. If you cannot find out a bona fide spiritual master, or if you cannot satisfy the bona fide spiritual master, then you must know, uh, you do not know where you are going. Nagati uh, kutopi. Therefore, Vishnu uh, Chakravati Thakur says, Dhyayang stupang stasya. This is the process. So, uh, uh, we, uh, we should make this, uh, this our um, goal of life. How to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God? Govindam Madhi Purusam Tamangalya. This is the real part part. We chant this that we are trying to satisfy uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda. Jasa, Gnaya, Brahmati, Sang, Vritakala, Chakra. There are so many verses of this Govinda, Madhi, Purusam, Brahma, Sanghita, uh, and, and Bhagavad Gita also, uh, Simad Bhagavata also. So, there is uh, immense knowledge of understanding, it is a great science, science of God. So if anyone is interested uh, about uh, understanding the science of God, then he should take seriously uh, this moment of uh, Krishna consciousness. Now one may question, 
Yeah, why should I be interested to understand the science of God? Why not uh, to understand the science of so many material things? Uh, why one should we know? Uh, this is the necessity. Oh, that is the Vedanta's injunction. Athata Brahma Jigyasa. This is the opportunity. This human form of life is the opportunity to understand the science of uh, the absolute. Either you say God or absolute truth or the super soul, the something. Uh, but uh, this life is meant for understanding. Uh, if we miss this opportunity, we do not know uh, where we are going. Uh, the defect of the modern civilization is they don't care. Uh, hedonism. There was uh, in uh, long, long before, there was an atheist philosopher, uh, as there are many atheist philosophers nowadays, in former days also. He was known as Charvakan. He, According to his opinion, uh, he says that uh, don't care for next life. Don't care. Basi bhutasya dehasya kuta punaragavanu vave. Uh, he says, uh, because according to the Vedic system, uh, this the body is burnt after death, as you <clears throat> bury in the underground. Uh, they, there are the three processes everywhere. Uh, somebody throws away for being eaten up by uh, birds, or somebody puts within the uh, ground, or somebody burns it. So, Charvak Muni said that after burning this body, who is coming and who is, is responsible? You see, you live merrily as, as far as possible. If you have no money, then borrow or steal, but live very uh, nicely uh, to person's pleasure. That is Charvak Muni's theory. And uh, uh, mostly at the present moment, that theory is being followed. But the question is that uh, Charbak Muni says there is no next life. What is the proof? Does it mean that his word is proof that there is no next life? Uh, then everyone will say something. Uh, of course, that is being accepted. Anyone's discoveries or says something nonsense, it is accepted. But the, the process of Vedic uh, understanding is not like that. You have to accept knowledge from the authority. Therefore, the Vedic uh, system has rejected the Charvak Muni. He has no authority. He is authority himself. He says that there is no life. But what is the proof? But there are many proofs that there is next life. So who will accept Charvak Muni's theory? Nobody. No sane man will accept. Uh, and suppose if there is life, there are two philosophers. One says that there is no life. Another other says uh, there is life. Now we have to study both. If there is life and if there is no life. But if there is life, the next answer to Charvak uh, theory if there is life, then if I am working irresponsibly, then I am uh, becoming victim to my next life. So there are, but we have to take from the authority, just like the Bhagavad Gita says, that uh, the soul is never born and never dies. Even after the uh, annihilation of this body, there is uh, no destruction of the soul. And soul is migrating uh, in different species of life. So you have to take Krishna, uh, the authority, Vedabhas, the authority. There are many such authorities. So there is next life. There is no doubt. There is practical proof. There is, and Krishna has given many proof. I have spoken in this meeting many times. There is next life. 
So we should be responsible. This human form of life should not be wasted simply for sense gratification. That sense gratification uh, uh, facility is in every, even in the cats and dogs, there is that facility. By nature, it is already arranged. But the special qualification of this human form of life is to know himself. Oh. And you know, to try to understand that why I am in miserable condition. Uh, where from I have come? Where I have to go? What is God? What is this world? Uh, this is called Vedanta. Vedanta means to understand all these things. So, Veda means knowledge. And Anta means the last stage of understanding. So, the last stage of understanding is Srimad Bhagavatam or Vedanta. So, uh, our request, our Krishna consciousness movement is that we are requesting everyone that you do not spoil your life in uh, pursuit of sense gratification uh, like animals, but uh, think that this life is very responsible life. You try to understand yourself, uh, what you are, why you are put into this miserable condition of material existence. If there is any remedy, uh, there is remedy. So we must take advantage of it and make our life successful. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Uh, if our first concern should be to serve God and Krishna, why should there be a hope like that? Because you do not know. Well, you do it. You you're telling people out of love. Certainly, but Krishna also tells. Krishna tells. Krishna comes himself. But you might get so caught up in the movement that you're forgetting about your serving God. Is this? Is this? Why I am serving God? This movement means I am serving God. To see, what do you mean by serving? He, Krishna says that you obey me. And if I say that you obey Krishna, is it not service? Yes. If your father says, my dear boy, you obey me. And if your uh, oldest brother says, my dear brother, you obey father, is it not service to the father? So we are doing the same business. Krishna says, Sarva dharman paritajya mami kang saranang vaja. You give up all other engagement, just surrender unto me, I shall give you protection. And we are saying the same thing, that you surrender to Krishna and you will be happy. So, uh, we are voluntarily giving service to Krishna. Uh, therefore, it is service. Preaching war is the best service. If you preach rightly, if you preach wrongly, that is disservice. You have to simply say the same thing as Krishna has said. Krishna has said the Sarpadharman Paritajamami Kangsana. You simply surrender unto me. So we have to say the same thing that you simply surrender unto Krishna. Then it is all. If I add something by my uh, concoction, then it is not service. If I say you don't serve Krishna, you serve me, I am gone, then it is, I am going to hell. We have to say you serve Krishna. I have no right to accept any service from you. Uh, but I can accept anything on behalf of Krishna. That is the spiritual master position.
So, what is your question? Is the movement might get in the way of serving Krishna? Yes, it is service of Krishna because you, you have understood what Krishna wants, we are preaching the same thing. Well, was there always a kind of a, uh, a, a movement? Yes, the movement is always there. Uh, just like uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is say, Jada jada hi dharmasya glani bhavati bharata abbutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam sijamah. He says, my dear Arjun, whenever people are misguided and there is uh, too much manifestation of uh, irreligiosity, uh, at that time I appear myself. So this movement, uh, this material world is such that uh, suppose one thing is now set right, but still, the time is so cruel, uh, after some time, it will be distorted. This is the way of material existence. Therefore, uh, movements require. Uh, whenever there is deterioration of the real truth, there is a necessity of movement. But the same movement, not a new movement, uh, the movement means God is there, He is great, we are all subordinate, therefore our duty is to uh, abide by the order of God, then we are happy. The movement is very simple, uh, uh, there is no uh, misunderstanding. The same movement was preached by Lord Krishna. The same moment was preached by Lord Jesus Christ. The same moment we are also preaching. So there is no defense. Uh, simply accepting the authority or the greatness of the Supreme Lord and engage ourselves. That's it. There is nothing new. You don't try to see something new. It is not new. It is the oldest. Because God is oldest. You are oldest. And your relationship is also oldest. <coughs> Therefore, the movement is also oldest. You cannot uh, manufacture anything new. People are after something new. Uh, what new you'll have? Everything is old. The sun is old. The world is old. The moon is old. The atmospheric change is also old. The seasonal change. What is new there? Uh, millions of years ago, there was sun, and still the sun is there. At that time, the sun was hot. Still, it is hot. At that time, people are dying. The people are still dying. So, what is new? It is simply waste of time for manufacturing something new. A concoction. There is nothing new. The old law is going. History repeats itself. That is all known to everyone. So our movement is not new. It is the same movement that you accept the supreme authority of God or Krishna. That's all. This is Krishna consciousness movement. But uh, the process adopted is suitable for this time. That is also not new, not manufactured. It is recommended that in this age, just like uh, during winter season, uh, the process is to protect your body from being affected uh, of cold. So that process is not new. Similarly, in this age, this age is called Kaliju. So it is recommended where God realization is uh, only possible by this chanting. Hare Krishna. Simple process. You command 
sit down, it doesn't matter what you are, whether you are Indian or you are American or Christian or Hindu, a man, a woman, black, white, it doesn't matter. You simply come, chant Hare Krishna and realize God. Because in this age, a uh, very severe method cannot be uh, followed. <coughs> the people are so fallen that uh, even four principles we have ordered that don't take meat, uh, don't have illicit sex life, don't uh, take, uh, participate in gambling, and don't, uh, I'm going to say, what is the other? Huh? Intoxication. It is very difficult. Oh. Why they avoid Krishna consciousness? Oh. Just like our friend Alan Ginsberg, he says Swamiji is very conservative. <laughs> so, I have so many friends they ask me, Swamiji, why you impose these rules? You see, the people are so unable. Uh, their inability is so strong that these four principles only. Uh, now you want sex life all night, we say that you get yourself married. But that is already difficult. Uh, intoxication, nobody has learned smoking from the beginning of his life. It is simply by association. So if you associate with us, you will forget smoking, drinking. It was learned by association, you can forget it by association. No child used to eat meat from the very birth. It was milk. So this is all artificial. The so-called conventions of human society. Natural life does not allow all these things. So, by good or bad association, you have acquired so many artificial, I mean to say, habits. So, simply by association, you can forget us. Then you come to the pure uh, light. And uh, God is pure. Uh, just like without being uh, uh, heated, you cannot uh, stand in a place which is very heated. The temperature must be the same. This is not to everyone. So, God is pure. You cannot approach God being impure. So, the whole process of Krishna consciousness is purificatory <coughs> process. Uh, Rishikena, Rishikesa, Sevanang, Bhakti, Ruchat. Rishik, Rishik means senses. And Rishikesa means the master of the senses, the lord of the senses, Krishna. So, by uh, engaging your senses in the service of the master of the senses, that is called Bhakti. Now, how you can do that? Tatparatena nirmalam. You have to simply purify it. Then it is easily possible. So Krishna consciousness means to uh, adopt the purificatory process and then you have got natural engagement in the service of the Lord. Your life is perfect. Yes? You mentioned that it was natural for a child to drink milk or not eat them in need of an animal. And uh, stress, natural. Is it natural for a child to grow up and shave his head and to serve God? Or is it just a, a uh, form of socialization? No, it is natural because he's fond of his mother, fond of his father. So, so we shall be fond of our, the Supreme Father. That's all. It is natural. No child, you can see, he's not fond of his father and mother. When he's grown up, 
when he associates with his friends, he tries to forget his father and mother. But in the beginning, uh, the other day I was citing the example. Uh, naturally, a natural affection, father's affection is there, mother's affection is there, child's affection is there. So father, mother never forgets the affection. But child forgets by bad association. Similarly, Krishna does not forget us. But we have forgot. So this process is to revive our natural position to love Krishna. Now we are unnatural, in unnatural condition, forgetting Krishna. Uh, so uh, this Krishna consciousness movement <coughs> means to bring back everyone to his original consciousness. Affection, love between the child and the father. And that is the best service uh, to the society. Suppose a child, nobody is greater than God, and we are all children of God. Therefore, we are children of the richest man. Because who can be richer than God? Who can be powerful than God? And you are sons of God. So, but we have forgotten, just like a boy from his childhood, he has left his home, very rich father, loitering in the street. He has no sufficient food, sufficient clothing. So, Somebody sees, oh, this boy, he belongs to that rich man. He's living in such wretched condition. Uh, so the best service to that boy is to bring back to his father. Not that, my dear boy, uh, I know that you are a very rich man's son. You have now forgotten. You, cannot, you have no proper eating. I'm giving you a morsel of bread you eat it. That is also a service. But the best service is to bring him back to his rich father. Similarly, people are trying to serve the human society by so many morsels of food, that's all. And we are trying to bring back to his father. Therefore, Krishna consciousness is the best service to the humanity. Because his all problem will be solved as soon as he goes back to his father. No more problem. Therefore, everyone should take seriously about this Krishna consciousness. Okay. Yeah, I saw a card last night which said, uh, you know, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Sikama Incorporated, a friend of mine asked me why we would incorporate more. Because you want it. Because you want it incorporated. Your state wants it. Your state means you. Do you say who wants to take government? Yes, government wants it. You cannot be revolting against the government, you have to leave, keeping pace with the government. Eh? We are, we are, uh, in Krishna consciousness, that does not mean we shall not use this electricity, we shall not take an apartment, or we shall not sleep, something unnatural we have to do. Why? Everyone abides by the law, we have to abide by the law. There is no difficulty. And the government provides the religious society or this society that they should uh, get themselves incorporated so that it is recognized. And in so many activities, uh, they want to know whether this society is recognized. So we have to take on these measures. We cannot go out of the purview of the general rules and regulations. 
Asia. Well, the sad news is India. We have one here and, you know, when you're in the woods and stuff, I guess. Do they yeah. have spiritual teachers? The sad news in India, who the ones who uh, live in the forests and places like that, you know, wander around. So, of course, those who are living in the forest, there is no barbar. Naturally, they have got long hairs. But <coughs> why the sadhus in the city imitate them? There is no meaning. If a man is living in the forest, there is no facility of the barber, so he can keep long hairs. And why in the city? I didn't. I didn't mean in here. I meant that's that's the there's a sad dude who lives in the woods. Does he have uh, a spiritual master or? Oh, yes. how, does, how does he live in the woods without a spiritual master and learn? No, the in the roots also there are many saintly person and uh, people go there. Uh, accept spiritual master and uh, live with the spiritual master. Uh, but uh, mm, that is not very much convenient in this age. So, in this age, uh, nobody is going to the forest to find out spiritual master, but the spiritual master has to come and canvas from India to New York. <laughs> 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 this is a different position. <laughs> yes. He says that everybody who has laws should live under them. Does an individual have the right to choose his own laws? Yes. Just like when you go past keep to the right, you have got the right also to go to the left. <laughs> but as soon as you go to the left, you are criminal. That's all. But taking the, one of the commandments of the Christian Bible, thou shalt not kill, and applying that to a federal law, or to be only a description of stuff, there you have it too. Laws, they're not standing for the same law with different interpretations. That... What is that? The, the, uh, the law in the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. But the, the federal law said, It says you must go into the army and kill. So, which, which to follow? It's a, there's a, they differ. They both say opposite things. Yes. The thing is, is, it is very simple to understand that just like a soldier is killing and the state is awarding him medal, and the same soldier, when comes home, if he kills somebody, he is hanged. Why? He can say, so when I was in the war field, I was I have killed hundreds of men, and I was given gold medal. And now I have killed simply one man. I am going to be hanged. Why? So it is the cause. If the cause is great, then killing is no sin. How does one interpret that the God was great? By satisfied that I have already explained. You have to see whether God is satisfied. That is that cause is great. Perfection of your activity will be just whether by your action God is satisfied. But you say that the way we hear from God is through words in the MF. These words are planned by the men that are making it by it. Oh, that's by the man you're making I have no, I have no assurance that it's the word of God, unless every movement is God to move. No, that's, I, I don't say this movement or that movement. The general principle is that if you think by certain type of fighting, God is not satisfied. 
then you should not fight. But if in some fighting God is satisfied, then you should fight. We do not say anything out right that this is bad or this is good. Uh, we say anything that has given satisfaction to God, Krishna, that is good. Anything which has not given satisfaction to Krishna or God, that is bad. Now you have to judge yourself how Krishna is satisfied. That requires training, that requires understanding. But the standard of the same example, like this, the same mistake, the same man, when he was fighting in the battlefield, uh, he was uh, being elevated to a higher position, uh, rewarded. But same man coming back from the uh, battlefield, he has killed somebody, some of his neighbor, or his hand. But the same state is there, the man is there, the action is there, the same. But why? The judgment is different. Similarly, we have to satisfy the great. And the greatest of the great is God or Krishna. If by your action Krishna or God is satisfied, then it is all. I don't say that this fight is good, that fight is bad. Oh. Fight or no fight. Even without fighting, he may be bad. Just like uh, the instruction which we get from Bhagavad Gita, uh, Arjun was denying to fight and he was considered by Krishna bad because he was not satisfied. This is the evidence. And when Arjun decided to fight to satisfy Krishna, it was taken as good. So whole thing should be set in a test just by the satisfaction of the Supreme Law. Sangsiddhi Haritosana, the perfection of any action in the material world, this thing is good, this thing is bad, that is our mental concoction. Everything is bad. Yeah. Everything is bad. We are simply manufactured by uh, our own imagination that this is good, this is bad. <coughs> but to keep pace with the human society or peace in the human society, there is necessity of doing uh, or adopting something which is approved by somebody or uh, state. That is different thing. That is material. But actually, at the ultimate end, uh, as we have uh, cited the quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam, good or bad means uh, satisfaction or dissatisfaction of the law. If any action is approved or gives satisfaction to the law, that is good. If any action uh, gives dissatisfaction to the law, it is bad. That is the general. Uh, now, you have to uh, adopt yourself in the service of the Lord uh, in such a way that you can know that this action is giving satisfaction, this action is not giving satisfaction. Then your life is all done. And all our faculties of perception will, will be purified by adopting this Krishna consciousness. Yes. And understand. Krishna consciousness means purification of all faculties. Because uh, the faculties work on the basis of consciousness. If your consciousness is pure, the, just like uh, I am seeing, uh, I am not seeing, my mind is seeing. So if my mind is pure, then my seeing is pure. Similarly, if my consciousness is pure, my mind is pure. Uh, it is superficial. 
Uh, I am moving my hand. I am not moving. My mind is moving. So all the senses, ten senses, and uh, the central sense is mind. And behind mind, there is intelligence. And behind intelligence, there is consciousness. And this consciousness is purified, then the whole thing is purified. If this consciousness is polluted, then the whole thing is polluted. So you have to purify the consciousness. That is Krishna consciousness. So then a man who is not, does not have a purified consciousness has no way of knowing what is good or bad. No. He's, the, he's, il he's an illusion. <coughs> Maya, that is called Maya. He's accepting something bad as good. Just like one is accepting this body as self. The world, whole world is moving, accepting this body as the self. The Atma Buddhi. But I am not this body. That's a fact. So it is illusion. Yeah. You referred earlier to some truths of afterlife. And I can't wait, so I don't know the mention of them earlier. Or, or he wishes to see proof of that. He wishes to see proof of the afterlife. Uh, either in writing or he wants to not do something. Afterlife proof. I'm interested. Huh? I'm interested in that idea. What proof is that? And is it available in any way? So, like, we didn't study it. No, exactly. Is it available in right? He wants to read it in the book. Something that explains the, the, the uh, validity of a, of a statement that there's a math to life. And then Bhagavad Gita. You study Bhagavad Gita, you'll understand everything. So that's 68 volumes? No. Oh my God. Uh, Bhagavad Gita is one volume only, seven, uh, 18 chapters. So it is not very, 700 verses. You can read it um, in three days. It is not very typical. So we have published Bhagavad Gita as it is. And I think if you read, you will get so many nice information. And after reading Bhagavad Gita, you read uh, Bhag Simad Bhagavatam, then you get further enlightenment. Then you read teachings of Lord Chaitanya, you get further enlightenment. And for general information, we have got this back to God, you can read. So we have got sufficient literature. And it is not that simply we are talking, we are backed by sufficient. And uh, knowledge and literature. Yes. Um, well, it's been suggested that perhaps the like, battlefield in the Bhagavad Gita is, is the battlefield of Arjuna's mind and then Krishna, the course of his senses. That means you uh, think that battlefield is uh, is an imagination. That that, that the battlefield is symbolic of of uh, Arjuna's mind and the the forces. The who is Krishna? Who is Krishna? Suppose uh, Arjun is uh, talking uh, with. Krishna, then who is uh, uh, mind is Krishna? You mean to say? I mean to say that the battlefield is symbolic of. What is, you see, they give the example this is this symbol, this is this symbol. What is the symbol of uh, battlefield? That you do not know? Are you saying that it should be taken literally? 
No, no. What is your idea? You are putting question. Are you clear in your question? Or you are simply questioning without any clear idea? What is your position? You mean, what am I asking? Yes. I'm asking if the battlefield ah. in... Why you are asking that? What? Why you are... Why that question is in your mind? The ba battlefield is uh, imaginary. Oh, because that's what I read. What... Oh, that means you are, you are misled. Well... You have not read very nicely. <laughs> Don't you think that perhaps it could be symbolic? No. <laughs> no. Not at all. <laughs> well, you have to, if you present symbolic, then you should give, this is the symbol of this, this is the symbol of this. What is the bat symbol of battlefield? Huh? That means you, you are misled. Don't study on this nonsense. You'll be misled. Therefore, we are presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is. The battlefield, Kuru Khetra, Kuru Khetra. It is Dharma Khetra, Dharma Khetra. Pandava, Panda. We have explained in that way. Not that we have accepted a battlefield is this or that. No. But men have written with symbolism upon it. Because after symbolism, all can be ages. No. Why? Do you take any, any historical fact or symbolism? If there is uh, historical facts, do you take a, a, a symbolism? Suppose somebody is describing the World War number 2. Is it symbolism? Well, I suppose not. Okay. So similarly, uh, uh, this Bhagavad Gita is described in the history of India, Mahabharata. So how we can take it? Symbolism. Mahabharata is the history. Maha means great. Great history of India, Mahabharata. It is historical fact. How we can take it? Symbolism. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Varsi, Dharma Kshetra, Kuru Kshetra. The battlefield that Kurukshatra is still lying in India from very old time. So how you call it, call it symbolism? And it is Dharma Kshetra in the Vedic literature. It is in uh, uh, the injunction is Dhar Kurukshetra Dharma Macharet, and still people go to Kurukshetra for and uh, religious religious rituals. Still they go. That Kuru Ketra battlefield is there. It is, is, is uh, being treated as a, the place of pilgrimage. How you can say that it is symbolic? This is all nonsense. Historical facts is still being, uh, uh, I mean to say, followed. The Pandavas, oh, that is a historical. It's still, there is one old fort. People say this fort belongs to the Pandavas. The Indraprastha, New Delhi is called Indraprastha. Everything is historical. I will take symbolic. Possibly. Basically, what is this question? Say something about Krishna has something in his mind, therefore it becomes factual. He projected it from his mind, and thus it became history. No, no, not that he projected it, but people trying to please Krishna in the true message. You have to please Krishna. Not trying, but if you don't please Krishna, then you are in difficulty. That is your position. It is not Krishna's interest. It is your interest. 
Just like if you want to live peacefully, you have to please the state. There is no question that by pleasing, uh, by pleasing the state by yourself, the state becomes very enriched. It is for your interest. If you please the state, then you can live very peacefully. Similarly, Krishna is full in himself. He is great. He does not require your some action so that he may be pleased. He is pleased already. But if you please him, then you are happy. That is your interest. Yes. Hi. What do you think of since there are people in different temperaments, you know, nice people, then I'm not sure how to say it. Um, well, don't you think that by denying Raja and Jhana and some of the other yogis that you're denying the infinite aspect of the man, man? I just think that by asserting Bhakti Yoga is the only way that you're saying it. Yes, infinite aspect. We are publishing one uh, article, Dr. Frog. The Dr. Frog means he, perhaps you know everyone, the, the frog lives in a well that is only a few feet. And one, uh, another frog, he is giving information to his friend in the well. My dear friend, I have seen a vast water, Atlantic Ocean. But this frog has never seen Atlantic Ocean. He is calculating. It may be uh, so much big, it may be so much big, it may be so much big. So, how this infinity can be calculated by the frog? So, those who are calculating infiniteness of this teeny soul, they are all doctor frogs. You are not infinite, you are finite. How you can be infinite? You can be infinite only when you dovetail yourself with infinite. Individually, you are finite. That is the position, real position. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 15th chapter, you have read Bhagavad Gita. So, did you not read this uh, verse? In the fifteenth chapter, Mamai Vangsa Jiva Bhuta Jiva Luka Sanat. Have you read this? That these living entities, they are my parts and parcels, fragmental parts. So you are, his God is infinite. You are infinite simul part and parcel. So how you can be infinite? I mean that the aspects of well, you said yourself that there, that there are people of many different temperaments, many different temperaments. But there must be one standard temperament. What is standard temperament? You, you may have different views of something, but there must be some standard view. <coughs> we are not concerned with the different views of different persons. We have to accept the standard view. That Krishna. Well, but don't you think that perhaps bhakti yoga isn't the way for everyone? Yes. That for some people, other yogas would apply more to their. Yes, that is that is the, in the preliminary stage. Some just like uh, the same example that you have to go that uh, in New York that uh, empires um, um, state building. Uh, 102 story. So everyone is going to the top, but somebody has passed 10 uh, steps, somebody has passed 12 steps, somebody has passed 20, but there may be thousands of steps. So one who has gone to the top, he has passed all the steps. Similarly, they are, there are different processes of yogas, karma yoga. Uh, Gana Yoga, they are divided into three. 
the, all these three yogas are described in the Bhagavad Gita. Karma Yoga, Gana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. But you will find the Yogi Namapi Sarvesa. When Yoga is described in the sixth chapter, you will find the Lord says, Yogi Namapi Sarvesa. Uh, of all the yogic process, Yogi Namapi Sarvesa Madhgata Antaratmana. One who is who has taken me within himself. A Sadhavana Bhajati Juma. And with faith and love he is uh, engaged in my service. He is first class yogi. So the first class yogi had all these Krishna conscious boys and girls. First class yogi. Because they are always thinking of Krishna within. And that is recommended by Krishna. The author of all yogic principles. He is called Yogesa. The master of all yogic principles. So he said that here is a first class yogi. Who, who is thinking always within himself, me, Krishna. Yogi nama bhi sarve saam matgata antarapana. Sadhyavan with faith and love. Bhajate is engaged in my service. He is the first class, top mushroom. So all yogic process must culminate in Krishna consciousness. So anyone who has accepted Krishna consciousness, he is supposed to be uh, the first class yogi. Actually, what is the ultimate end of yoga? The meaning of yoga is contact. Contact with whom? The Supreme. The Krishna is the Supreme. So one who has contacted Krishna, he is as yogi. If somebody says that I am incarnation of God, then why you cannot say that you are incarnation of God? What is the defense? Well, I think the difference is that Rama prediction was the subject of years. No, not in India. Don't say like that. What? No. Rama was accepted as incarnation. Krishna was accepted as incarnation. In every home, there is Rama and Krishna worship, not this Rama Krishna. Neither any Acharya accepts him. If Rama Krishna, he said himself that the one who has Krishna, one who has Ram, I am the same. So his disciple accept. Vivekananda accept. But in that way, if somebody dies, he says, one who has Krishna, one I was Ram, I am. His sons accept. That is not uh, the way. Out. There must be proof. Krishna is accepted by Vaste, by Nara. By Chaitanya, by Navanuja, by so many great scholars, stalwart. Therefore, Krishna is accepted by all Indians as God, and He has proved Himself, His activities. That is Vedic proof. The scholarly proof, authority proof. There are so many things and people, there are thousands and millions of temples of Krishna worship in India. And how many temples they have got Ram Krishna? Well, Ram Krishna is pretty decent and also. Uh, uh, Krishna, because he's old, therefore, yes, that people have taken. People uh, forget all things. Why they are adhering? The old things. 
At Vrindavan only one place, there are 5,000 temples of Krishna. Only in Bimal. So this is all propaganda. We have to test who is incarnation, who is not, by the authorities. Who are the authorities? The Vedic literatures. Lord Buddha is accepted as incarnation in the Vedic literature. People that have come since the Vedic literature. Huh? What about people that have come since the Vedic literatures? He says, what about people who have come since the Vedic literatures? Since the time the Vedic literatures were written? <sighs> what about them? Vedic literature is not written. It is before the creation. Vedic, Vedas, before the creation. And they... Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, then statement, Tene Brahma Rida. Uh, Brahma is considered to be the first created living entity. So he learned Vedas from within, uh, from the super soul, Tene Brahma Rida. So Vedic letter it is not written. At a certain time, it is coming. It is called Apurusha. It is not man made. So you have to study very scrutinizingly, then you will understand. Thank you for your question. Now, chant. A incarnation has to be accepted by the evidence. Of Vedic literature, by his activities, by his features, and uh, by authorities. There are so many things. Not that if somebody says, I'm in condition, and therefore I become in condition. No, not in that. If somebody comes here and says, I'm President Johnson, so any sane man will accept him simply because he says, And if somebody accepts him blindly, then he's a fool. Oh, he must he must they, they thought, oh he says brother, let us test whether bona fides, his credentials, what how he is President Johnson. So we cannot accept even a, a man. How can we accept God without credentials? What is the credential of Ramakrishna? That is incarnation of God. These things are what we consider. Not that because Vivekananda accepted, therefore one has to accept. What is the credential? What is the proof? What is the extraordinary birth? Rama, Lord Rama is accepted with God. There are so many extraordinary work. Krishna is accepted with God. They have got, he has got so many extraordinary work. All right. Yes. What do you what do you know of this Maharaji? He becomes so well famous. What do you tell us of his teachings by way of comparison? He's famous uh, amongst the fools. <laughs> <laughs> He's not famous for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. He he cheated some fools because they wanted to be cheated. That's all. And he finished his business. After we fooling, then he retired, that's all. Because he wanted to be cheated. Some cheap method to become God immediately. Mm -hmm. 
inquire directly a question to the spiritual master directly, or is it better? Is it better to wait for the answer to come? In the less demand for it. It's a better to add. No, you should find out a spiritual master. Everyone should find out. That is the injunction of the Vedas. That vijnana artham sa guru me. If you are interested to understand the spiritual science, then you must find out. That is your business. All right. Past ten and nine. No. Yes. Now chat, please.